You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Raid After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Raid After Show. I'm so excited. Don't let it play! Let the song play! It's the last time we get to hear it this season. Just let it drop. Just let it drop. It's so good! I love this song! I don't care about the song! Do you see her sitting next to me? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys! <laughs> Welcome to your favorite after show for your favorite show, Rain! Bash is in the building! We have Torrance Coombs here. Thank you so much for being here. I cannot even tell you watching the episode, sitting next to you and being like, oh my god, Bash is right next to me. I just. It was so many emotions. It was kind of hard not to spoil it for you. I'm what? so glad you did it, but I would have been fine with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I am your host, Keaton Markey, and we have a full panel today. And we have a surprise guest. We do have a surprise guest. Well, this was not slated this way, but we do. Who? Oh, yeah. What do you mean, who? We have a vet. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No. What are you doing? <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? I was like, what is going on? I'm just kidding, yeah. guys. It's not really the a whole bet. cast was gonna come through that door. I literally just surprise was you. waiting for my favorite Delf to walk through. I or like some. Well, sorry to disappoint you. No. <laughs> Maybe I'll go father some children and come right back. So cute. No, no, oh no, my no, no. We are so happy to have you here. Right. I All am right. so there. happy to we have you. We are so happy. Did right you not see? Here. I got so angry at Fania because you're sitting next to her and not me. But you know, whatever. <sighs> you guys, it's as good yeah. as it really can be right now. But we do have a special guest that we weren't expecting, and we're so happy. No, it's not really a vet, but it could be. Basically, her <laughs> doppelganger. <laughs> Sorry to crash the party. <laughs> we love that you. We love party crashers. Yeah, Are you kidding okay, me? Cool. That's Especially fine. cute ones. <laughs> thank you. It's awesome to have you here. So thank you. Thanks. I feel all like official here with this. I feel like I should be reporting. <laughs> from a helicopter, from a helicopter. Like the traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us the weather. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hot. What's the no, traffic? No, it's snowy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I live in a, a, a land of weather extremes. I either go from like Arctic tundra to heat wave. That's that's kind of my life. Yeah, There's I saw I saw the behind the scenes photos of uh, last week's episode, and you know, kind of. It just looks, you guys look so miserable when it's, when the cameras aren't on. You guys make it seem so fun when, yeah, when you know, when we're watching the show, but off it. It's yeah, like, whoa. We, we dive into a warm up tent in between setups because sometimes our, our show is quite, uh, uh, you don't see what's going on behind the scenes. It's quite immaculately lit and lighting takes a long time. So sometimes you kind of do a couple takes of a scene and then, okay, turning around to get the other angle and two hours later, they've relit it for the other side. Wow. So we're not standing out in the cold that whole time, obviously. Thank goodness. Nice. <laughs> so should we start? I mean, yourself? You haven't introduced in yourself. Can, can, Hi. Can, I, can, yeah. I, can, I, can I get a little less volume in this? Absolutely. You sure can. Handle that. How's that? Uh, down a bit more. Keep going? Okay. A little bit more. Yeah. That's okay. perfect. We like that. That's perfect. <laughs> there we go. Wait, you're saying down a little more. Right? <laughs> I know. That's perfect. Just down a little bit more. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I can't. Well, I can't. As you guys know, I'm Finia Thomas. <laughs> oh my gosh. And let's just get right into this episode. Episode 22, you guys. It was a great, great, great season finale. Slaughter of the Innocents. Yeah. It was. It was quite, quite are aptly they, are titled. Are they calling Henry Innocent then with that? I, they could, I mean, it's got, it's got triple meanings. You know how yeah. they always say yeah. something has a double lot meaning? Slaughtered. Innocence as in innocent people. Innocence as in the state of innocence. Innocence. Really, two meanings. There's yeah. two meanings to it. I mean, you could argue King Henry was innocent. I don't know. He was just a little gray. <laughs> well, certainly the people on the boat were innocent oh overall, so they they, they got slaughtered. The soldiers. Let's, let's That's talk right. about one of those guys on the boat, uh, Lath, our, our lovely Lath and uh, Greer. We finally get to see them see each other again. Mm -hmm. They have this lovely reunion, very, very, very short lived. Like it was happy to see you. Sorry, no, can't marry you. Like, very, very sad. Laith still didn't give up. He went away, and then he survived the explosion of the ship. 
which that that was kind of a little crazy. I did not expect that to happen. I mean, as soon as they were like, why are they firing cannons? I'm like, something bad is about to happen. There's no reason for the cannons to be firing. But a ship blew up, and uh, Leith did survive. Mm -hmm. uh, he is then reunited again with Greer, who they get a little further into their love. And uh, then... I mean, for, for me, ultimately, what he said to her, because... You know, looking at it from his perspective, I was like, you know, I don't, I don't know who she should ultimately be with, but you know what he said from his perspective, I could buy into it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? That's Bash. a tricky one because, uh, yeah, Castleroy's not just looking after her; he's looking after her family, and mm -hmm. uh, that was her stated goal of even coming to French court in the first place. So she's really stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, I, I completely, and I wish she would have maybe explained to Laith a little bit more about the situation like because and obviously Laith is very blinded by passion and love right now so I don't know if it really would have changed things but like he can't offer safety for all of her kids but he did have a good point where he was like think about yourself for once be selfish for once and Greer is not really a selfish person she no she is the sacrificial lamb for her family which we've seen you know is this she love though, triangle. But, but, but if she wasn't selfish, she wouldn't be in this mess, and he wouldn't be head over heels for her. But then what about her sisters? What about... No, but I'm saying she would have never started anything with him. You know what I mean? She would have been like, this is wrong, and we're not going to do it. You know, I have a purpose, and I'm going to stick to that purpose. Yeah, she's young and naive. But when your heart, like, oh, they're in but that's, love. But that's acting upon selfishness, then. Well, what's wrong with wanting to be in love with the person that you're going to spend not the saying, rest of your I'm life I'm not with? saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying you're contradicting yourself. I was? Yeah. Because you're saying that she's, she's not selfish. I'm saying she is selfish. That's why she's in this mess with him. I don't think she's being selfish. She's sacrificing herself for her sisters and her family. Right. That's not selfish. That's All selfless. Right. That part of it. But she she's led him on thus far. That's selfish. Ugh. <sighs> I don't think, no, I don't think, I don't know. I I, I think Laith, I, I felt like he, he crossed the line a little bit. I see where he's coming from, like, you know what, you could have just, like, followed me, like, I will make you happy, we love, like, we're in love, I'm gonna be somebody someday soon, I'm already on my way to that. And, but then when he's, like, he, like, takes a dig at her, and he's, like, someday I'm gonna be rich. Very, very, very. I think he was rich. speaking from a place and of being I am hurt. I'm never gonna tell you. Like you're gonna just look back at this moment and realize this is when you ruined your life. Yeah. Whoa. Uh, people, people get really dramatic when they're hurt. Gosh. Yeah. Like he loves, he loves her, and he thought that he would come back and like, I have this position, I have this money, I have this coins, we can be together. But she's like, no, it's still not enough. So I think he was coming from a place of being in pain, and her saying you're not enough. So he was like, one day I will be and you're going to regret this. Bash didn't do that though. Well, that's... Yeah. <laughs> Bash is a different kind of guy. He is a little bit. <laughs> he's not much of a... I mean, he's lashed out a few times. He, he, he punched Francis at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he, he's been upset. He's, you know, he's acted... For the most part, he is, he is looking out for other people before himself. But sometimes he gets a little selfish. But everybody does. Right. Yeah. Well, he was always selfish about Mary, and especially in the early episodes. I mean, he made that quite clear. <laughs> yeah, but I guess because Francis was still beating around the bush. He was yeah. dilly-dallying and being wishy-washy, taking mistresses, just, you know, I, but, but France, but, uh, but Mary, but France, and he couldn't really decide. And uh, in that moment, um, like, well, fine, just stop wasting your time with that. Bash is at the end of the day is about you got to be about a person, not about a country, which is yeah. ultimately why he would have made a terrible king. And those early episodes of before you knew who Mary was going to end up with were like stepping outside of your, your role as Bash. Were you team Bash or team Francis? Uh, I mean, I always root for my own team, right? It's like, <laughs> like you don't. Uh... <laughs> That's a weird question. I don't. I don't really. Like, I don't like, really... Who, who did you think was would be have been better for Mary? Like um, back in the earlier episodes. I mean, that's that's hard to say. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you. I couldn't speak objectively on that because, from my perspective, it's just about trying to make her like me more. And yeah. at, like as a, as a person, as an actor, as a character, as an everything, you just shoot for that and see where it gets you. Even though historically, I knew I was kind of doomed. 
<laughs> we were trying to rewrite history early on. Well, Finia was trying to rewrite history tonight with uh, hoping that King Henry was not going to. I mean, have we perish. not learned anything from the CW show that they're not following history true to form? I so that. I bank on that. I appreciate that because if it did, then I would just know everything that was going to happen. Mm. And well, what fun would that be? Here's a little here's a little hint coming up though. Um, it's not it's not a spoiler, but what it is, what I am saying is that the plan is to stick to major historical signposts. So oh. being like major character deaths, they're mm -hmm. probably going to stick to that. Oh, so Francis is going to die. They're, they're, if it, in the cases that they're changing history, they're trying to find an excuse for why it ch changed. So it makes sense. Yeah, so gotcha. it makes sense. So Francis has descended testicles, let's say. So they're, they're <laughs> saying like it was just some weird painter's idea that he was sickly. So, right. you know, that's the kind of change they make. And, and um, the legitimization thing never happened. Um, so right. they're just sweeping that under the rug. Or the whole thing with, uh, with the... Um, uh, Tomas, the the Portuguese bastard prince, mm -hmm. right? He, you know, he his death never made the books because it got swept under the rug because people got paid off and the rich people write the history books. Like that, the, this stuff was explained in some form or other. So, right. I think as far as huge historical events and the overall arc of things, they're going for I wouldn't say accuracy, but they're following it. Okay. How, how aware are you of the history? I know, I know you mentioned that she's kind of your resident historian, but like you know, for you personally, uh, going into the show at least, I, some she gave me a, a good primer on it all, um, which is it's interesting for me. It was cool to get the context, but again, historically, my character doesn't exist, so I didn't have anything to go on there. Uh, but it just gave me a feel for the world of it a bit, and it's cool to hear sometimes. Sometimes the craziest parts of our show are the ones that turn out to be uh, drawn straight from the history books. You go like, oh, the writers made that up. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. and like, no, that's that's one of the things that actually did happen. Wow. Like that's Queen good. of the Bean. That's uh, like, it wasn't that exactly, but that's actually kind of a thing where there was like a, a servant would get something in their food and become queen for the day and they'd get to dine with the royals. That and, really yeah, happened? That's a real thing. There's no record, really? of course, of a of a queen uh, like, becoming a king's mistress for months on end and okay. like, of course, like not making a power that. play. But yeah, um, wow. But yeah, that the 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 tradition of like servant becomes uh, you know raised in status for a day is a real thing. Interesting. That is awesome. I don't know if it was called Queen of the Bean, but it was you know that Something that might similar. be a catchy title we came up with. But that I like was a that big too. old cake. Did you see that cake on set? It was a big cake. Was that whole thing cake, or was it partly like uh, cake? More of it than you'd think. Really? Like I was like, why did why is that much of it cake? Like it's just going to be sitting out in, under hot lights all day and like, start to attract <laughs> flies. We could have just made that cardboard. <laughs> yeah. I went to get a piece, and Tor was like, "No, you don't yeah. want to." You don't, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to eat prop food. It's pretty gross. Oh, because oh. you've had you've dealt with like a lot of blood and different things. Yeah. That, does it usually taste okay or yeah it tastes fine it doesn't taste like anything i'd the worst place when you get blood here i hate my neck being sticky oh. and when you've got your neck sticky like all day so anytime i like some poor servant or guard or something gets his throat slit and has to lie there all day i'm just like you poor sucker you <laughs> like you couldn't pay me enough to do that oh, God. so you would not do a sweeney todd movie I was, well if they paid me enough to do it so maybe you could pay me enough to do yeah, that is what yeah. I'm saying. Because you actually, you you had your first like acting role in a musical, right? Yeah, like way back when. Cats? Cats. I was the rum tum tugger. <laughs> that is so cute. I was like, uh, uh, yeah, I think I was like 11 or 12 and I was terrified. And I joined choir just thinking I got to sing and then I learned, oh no, they do a musical and you go on stage. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah, but I had a cool costume and... I rented Elvis videotapes to watch how he wiggled his hips so I could figure out, because I like just, the, the, the mere concept of sexy was so foreign to me, sure. or like what how that would even you? be. Like 11. Oh my God. 12. So, um, and I like, I wasn't a popular kid either. I was a really gangly, dorky kid. I'm not terribly much has changed. I'm just, you know, I pretend to be cool now. Oh, terribly but, much <laughs> has changed. Um, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, like these these poor girls had to be told like no, like find him at swoon now, swoon, okay? 
No, you know what swooning is? Like you're supposed to like, ah, when he walks by, just pretend to at least find him attractive. <laughs> that, that was the stage directions for that particular musical number. <laughs> And, and did you know then that that's when you wanted to be an actor? No. No. Um, I just knew I wanted to do it again the next year. Musical. And then um, and then I actually stopped acting for a bit and thought I'd go into like pottery or something. I, you know, like when you in school when you uh, you take an elective and you try out some visual arts. I didn't even sign up for theater, but the um, the drama teacher in my high school recruited me after the drama unit said you should actually come do this. Mm -hmm. And then I did, and, and she, then she cast me as the lead in plays throughout high school, and then uh, just kind of led into... I just kind of keep falling into it. I didn't mean to be an actor. <laughs> it just keeps happening. That's awesome, though. Yeah. Obviously, you're meant to be one. I, I, I guess for now, and anyhow. And all the ladies are swooning now, so... You know. Yeah, take that. <laughs> take that, grade six girls. That's Canadian, sixth grade girls. There we go. I'm American. <laughs> So, sh should we talk a little bit about Henry and about the... Yeah. The, Let's talk about We'll rain. get back into the show. We'll get back into the show a All little right. bit more. Tangent. What was... I want, I want to know your guys' reaction because, you know, every week, unfortunately, I have to watch alone. And you guys, you guys knew going into it what was going to happen, but what, what about you guys in terms... I called it. I called I mean, we it like did. We did. Ago. I, I, I read up that he died in... I knew the king... The actual king, Henry, died in a jousting accident. And I was like, as soon as I saw a preview for a jousting accident, I was like, he's dead. He's gone. <laughs> So but the, it's it's you know sometimes it's great you know you know when you watch a movie for the second time um, it's better the second time because you know the dramatic irony going into it and you can appreciate those moments and so when, when Francis reveals himself that that was the, the you know it wasn't the death so much it was that yeah I was shocked I, I well I have to, about the king I was sad I was hoping he wasn't dead I was like he could she just she rewound it like three times he could just like, no he's not dead he's not dead he's not seriously, dead seriously like he could survive with an eye patch and he'll be fine like I didn't want Sex Henry pirate. to die so I was you it's know. funny you mentioned eye patch because uh, Alan Van Sprang played a dude with an eye patch in the Tudors see <laughs> so it's like uh, although the Tudors historically comes before this so mm -hmm. okay. the timeline doesn't quite work out unfortunately you almost had a conspiracy theory there. <laughs> almost. But I was surprised that it was Francis. And I was like, okay, it's game on. He's putting on his king crown. So, and which is what I've been waiting for him and Mary this whole season is like, all right, it's going to come a time where they're going to have to be the ruler. So it's going to have to be now. So I'm, I'm sad about King Henry. I am. I'm surprised that like, I, I would feel if somebody killed a king in a jousting competition, that there would be... Like, regardless of whether they meant to or not, whoever that person was that was jousting against the king would probably immediately be thrown into jail. I don't know. Like, I was hoping that. Like, and I, so I was like waiting for like like that part of the story to come up a little bit about like accusing the guy that Francis knocked out, and then maybe questions arising. But maybe mm -hmm. maybe they'll give us some of that next season. And Catherine mentioned that she said, you know, you have to take a couple of blows because it is the Majesty that you're fighting. So I was hoping that. What about the advantage? I mean, uh, Alan Van Sprang, he's been so great in terms of playing this sexual deviant. <laughs> and now this time on Mary. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was uh, that was creepy to a whole nother level. Him being crazy was entertaining. Like, it was very funny, and I liked it. I didn't like him hitting on Mary, though. It made me uncomfortable. But, it, you know, I, I like how kind of everything sort of fit well. You know, now he's, oh, okay, he's okay with Mary not having a child now because it's God's will for him to impregnate her. Yeah, so, that was, <laughs> that that made me so uncomfortable. Did, I mean, were you, were you there any of those days that they were? Uh, yeah, but shooting on a different unit yeah, somewhere sure, else yeah. in the forest, yeah. In the forest. Gosh, that has to has to make you feel uncomfortable. I was like, oh, I don't know. It, that was weird. And but I and I loved how Catherine was just like, what the hell? Like, get your hands off. Like Catherine, like just was like not having it. Yeah, when at he put all. his like he put his hand in her lap or something. Like that was like whoa. That was like okay, go cool. okay, all right, Henry. Uh, keep your hands to yourself. It's okay. He had to go out with a bang. He was up. <laughs> Well, he didn't get to go out with the actual bang. Not the but... kind he would have liked. <laughs> <laughs> and he opened with a bang, like with him summoning everybody out of their beds and like. Oh God! And just stabbing somebody. <laughs> because he went to, because he was free of sin. Like, okay. I don't know. I, I we rest in peace, 
King Henry, we are going to miss you so much. We're going to miss you without your shirt, sometimes without Aww. your pants. Um, <laughs> and his shoes. And his shoes. And uh, I feel like I should pour out some of my beverage for King Henry. Okay. <laughs> like wow. something in the studio short circuits. <laughs> I know, that's why I was like, wait. Oh. So, yeah. We, but, I mean, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Francis now kind of as the king and especially you know knowing what we know about henry and, and you know the patterns of him as a king to see if francis at the very least is playing with his little chess toys as we, <laughs> we make fun of you know because then you know like okay he's he's obsessed he wants to go and attack something i did really love um that speech or that moment not only between catherine and henry in the end i felt like that i always loved you type of thing i was like oh this is so sweet like mm -hmm. I, I always knew that they 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 are somewhat soulmates as well as you know him and Diane, but then when he brings up Diane and Catherine is just all of a sudden like, oh, hell no. But she's like, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say yes and like leave you be. Yeah. Do you think Diane's going to get any sympathy from Catherine? None. None? None. Do you, could, could she potentially call Diane in and have her become one of her little ladies? Her, what? Mm, her, I, I don't think she'd, no. She no. can't control Diane. Yeah. No. Diane's, Diane's a bit too shifty. I think. I think. Yeah. Do you think Diane wants to come back? No, I think she's staying far away. I, it'll be interesting to see if anything plays out with that going forward. Because you'd think I would reconnect with my mother. So we'll, right. we'll see what happens. Yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, do you guys think in, in some sense it really was about Francis and, and Bash in that sense? Because, you know, they're the two mothers of these guys. And, you know, when then uh, his their conversation with Francis, you know, really was about, you know, love your brother because I didn't really have a chance to do that. You know, I, you know, I, I think there was that subtext of that. Oh, of him when he, you know what I mean? Like they're both to me, they're, they're equal. And, and I don't know. I got a little hint of that. I feel like, Hen I mean, and you can tell, do you think Henry saw you and Francis as equals? Um, interesting question. Uh, I, I, I don't know. He saw, he saw us pretty differently. Mm -hmm. um, he always, he sees his sons, or he, he saw whoever was in line for the throne as a, a usurper, mm -hmm. as opposed to a son to love, because even his own brother, as we find out, was competition, so yeah. he killed him. Um, and that's the way he goes. So, so um, power and stability is more important to him than family. But then he, there's some regrets about that in his dying moments. Yeah. And he maybe want, doesn't want to pass that on to his sons. Well, and then the fact that he literally tells Francis, when you kill somebody you love, it dark, it blackens your soul. And Francis is sitting there being like, yeah, I'm just killing, I just yeah, killed you that. and I loved yeah. you. <laughs> like, like that whole moment of Francis kind of like leaving that room, you just kind of felt like he, like, he just seemed like a different person, like immediately after that, because it kind of settled and I'm like, his father, without calling him out, kind of called him out about mm -hmm. kind of murdering him. So I wonder if we're going to see kind of crazy Francis come next season as we saw kind of Henry decline before his death, if we'll see Francis start to decline before his death. Yeah, it was interesting. There was actually um, the episode, the rough cut of the finale ran, I, I was told, 15 minutes over. Wow. So to give you an idea of how much material was cut out of there. So I think originally we did have, for example, Greer explaining in more detail to Laith uh, what was going on with Castle Roy. And we did have a moment where I explained what was going on with Henry. Medically, we figured something out. <gasps> what is it? So the, I guess I, I don't see there's any reason why I couldn't tell you this. I guess it's not officially canon because it was cut from the episode, but it, it turns out it's a, it was a brain tumor. What? Which at the time we wouldn't have known as a brain tumor, but a, like a growth. Right, yeah. um, and that was actually a thing. Brain surgery is, a, is an old medicine. People would, they'd open people up and figure out what was going on in there. So, yeah. Wait, history, did he really have a brain tumor? Did they do any type of autopsy after this? Uh, that I don't jousting? know. I just know that yeah, he did die in a jousting accident. Mm -hmm. And his older brother's death, mysterious death, was a, a mystery. Yeah. And he was suspected of killing his own brother. And it was on a tennis court, wasn't and it? And it was on a tennis court. He passed out from his water was poisoned. Interesting. Mm. And so they, no. don't, they never found out who did it, but they were suspicious of who did. Yeah, it, you know, that's the thing with these. You could be wishy-washy about it, but when you're making a TV show, you make these decisions. It's like, well, right. maybe he murdered his brother. No, he murdered his brother. Yeah. That's more interesting. Yeah. Let's do that's, that. that I, I, I love that, that you told us, because 
I thought for the longest time it was syphilis, <laughs> honestly, because well, that makes people go crazy. Well, and- we we thought it might be too. Um, uh, to Alan's credit, he wasn't told what it was because they were still working on it. Um, really? Yeah, they had they had a few ideas about what it would be. They just knew like crazy Henry for now. Wow. So he, but he would just kind of pick a type of crazy for the day and go for it, <laughs> and um, and they wrote for it because it was awesome. Yeah, he well yeah. done. He a plays a fr- great crazy. A lot of our friends thought it was syphilis, and then they started asking like in depth questions about. It. I'm like, I'm not a doctor. I don't, I don't <laughs> well, know. Well, it would have made a kind is. of sense just because of all the the sexual activity and everything. But and, then everybody yeah. would have syphilis, and that that plague would be kind that's of right. Spreading yes, yeah. the castle. <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. You would have syphilis. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh yeah, indirectly. And yeah. you have syphilis. And you, and you have, have syphilis. You get a whale. And you're, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's like Oprah handing out syphilis exactly. on the set of rain. Well. Or, <laughs> so King Henry is gone. Francis is now king. And in that, very quickly after he finds out he is king, I feel like the biggest kind of challenge he is thrown with is the fact that he has a child about to be born. Uh, our little cliffhanger with Miss Lola, who I really hope is not going to die. I I really hope. Like, g- give me something here. I don't want Lola to die. Does she die in real life? Uh, is there a Lola she, in real life? No. Uh-huh. No. Uh, so we don't know. There's no known heirs of Francis II. Oh, but it would be a bastard child anyhow. So, like, I'm I don't exist. So it could be a bastard child that is raised to a ripe old healthy age and because becomes somebody we know and love, or yeah. it could just be somebody that fades into nothing. Or I I hope Lila doesn't die either. I, I want her to. Survive. What did you feel about uh, Francis's reaction? I thought it was authentic, and I didn't want Lola to say. I didn't want Mary to say. I didn't want Mary to tell Francis. I was like, don't do it. I was literally at the TV, don't do it, don't do it. But. Well, here's the thing. Is it, you know, from that, is it guilt because he did it or is it anger because he wasn't told it? I think it was, it seemed more like anger to me. Like that. At, was, that he wasn't told because it. Because they were just kind of talking, having this moment about let's let's share our deepest, darkest secrets with each other at least. Because I feel like that weight of and killing Henry did. is like on him. Mm-hmm. And. So he just wants to be able to share that with somebody who's not going to judge him. He was asking, please don't judge me, but let's be this, this other person for each other. And that was very, very quick. Yeah, I, I agree. He very quickly, as soon as Mary kind of tried to share something with him, Francis went and did the normal, like the Francis thing, because this is kind of, Francis like is very emotional. He's a very, very emotional guy and he, he doesn't hide his emotions well and you see it. I thought uh, he was excited. Like he has a son, like, there's going to be an heir. I thought there was some of that in there I as well. I think it was he's pissed off that Mary lied to him. It's like, it's... It, but then there's also the fact that that happened, you know, what when, I guess when Mary and him were together, but she wasn't super happy about him hooking up with Lola in the first place. So it goes back to maybe feeling some guilt about that. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I think it's just basically like, ah, crap, this is really complicated. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is yeah. very, very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you, you, you got, you got out of that one. Yeah, dodge that. I, there, there was a little That's time good. where I thought like you and Lola were going to end up together. They they thought they might be going in that direction mm-hmm. for sure. They're, like there's all these little threads. It's interesting and ideas that writers have that just don't quite make it off the ground sometimes. And that's been part of the journey of making the show uh, on a network show where the scripts are flying at you the day before you shoot them. Wow. Uh, decisions are made to add things and cut them very last minute based on whatever mm-hmm. you know the the powers that be decide and it, it's interesting there will be a yeah a little pet project of a writer that just never sees the light of day but there's little threads of it still in there yeah i i i, I remember i had a prediction i was like oh bash is gonna save lola bash is gonna offer to marry lola and save her child and that, yep. didn't that was before well, Kenna. Yeah. Well, quick anecdote about that is like because that we don't again we don't get to see the scripts, but other people do like uh, costumes and and hair and makeup. They get scripts before we do. They like mm-hmm. to keep the actors in the dark, I think, because they don't want us to get too precious about things and then forbid them from cutting them from the final <laughs> script. So we get a last minute. So somebody leaked it to me. Said like, wait till you see who you marry. I was like, I get married. <laughs> and then in my head, I'm going like, what are the what are the possibilities for that? Who would I possibly marry? And in my head, it was going to be Lola. And for because I love Mary, I was going to take responsibility mm-hmm. for Lola's pregnancy. Or so I thought that was a storyline. Like, no, obviously that didn't happen. I don't I, know if that I was ever that an idea, happen. but that was that was my first thought. 
It would have been She's the bash like, thing to do. Yeah. I feel like if if Henry wouldn't have made you marry his mistress, that that it could have it could have gone that direction. But Julian yes. was great while Julian lasted. Julian was great. We never trusted him. Ju- he messed up so many things. He, I, well, he in the end he did, but they loved each other and they still love each That's other. That's wonderful. He's gonna be back. Lola can't die because Lord Julian has to come back. And because Giacomo oh. can rock a mustache like nobody else. Uh, we've heard stories about yeah. Giacomo. So, and the fact that his name is Giacomo, I mean, come on. <laughs> Bring him back, please. <laughs> um, so, Francis Mary, anything else you guys want to touch on with them? I mean, with I mean, them, it was just... I mean, in terms of Mary, because we haven't really spoken much about her, um, you know, her and Catherine have always been plotting this whole season. And, you know, they again, the, the title of the episode is called Slaughter of Innocence, and, and Mary's feeling like she's no longer, you know, where where Mary has to bow down to the queen and, you know, how she has these dual personalities, at least from her perspective. So I found that really interesting and especially right up until the last moment of, like, close the gates. Well, and it, it is making me a little nervous that... I, I always love when Mary sides with Catherine and when they work together, I think it's always better. But the fact that Mary went to her uncle for advice when we already know he's real sketchy. He is not a good dude. And she went to him for advice and then ended up coming out in that English dress. Made a huge statement. Huge. Got Henry all hot and bothered. And <laughs> she did. Got him, in, got him in a jousting sort of mood. Got him in a jousting sort of mood and got him in a uh, sorry about Jim kind of mood and death. So, I mean, I wonder how deep or how... I wonder how, like deep the duke's plans have been or like if this is what he's always wanted because Mm -hmm. it seemed for a while he was trying to get so close to henry but it's like i feel like he definitely has our ulterior motives yeah i think we have to keep an eye on him i think he's just he's just very ambitious so wherever he sees the power that's where he's he's like a a moth to the flame that's a nice word and he's ambitious and francis Mm -hmm. like francis made the promise to him that now he'll be his right hand man. I want to say like the hand of the king, but I don't think that's how they, <laughs> I don't think that's how they use it. In this. The Duke I like of it, Keys, yeah, the Duke of Keys will now be the hand of the king. Um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, at the end, Mary kind of lets Francis make the decision now, to go to Lola. The last time they were parting, wasn't it Mary that was leaving, and Francis was the one that was left behind? Well, yeah, because she was running off with you. Yeah, I liked how this time it was the Mary. The mid-season finale. Yeah, it was Mary that was left at the castle, and Francis was off. I liked that. Yeah, but it was Mary telling him to go. Well, I don't think he, I don't think he should have went. I well, think he yeah. I think he should have listened to Mary, and she, she should have stayed. And but then I don't know. Then who knows what would happen in season two? Yeah, it was a better cliffhanger. A cooler uh, shot. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I, you, you know, I mean, this is going to, you know, tie into Bash's storyline soon enough. But with uh, with the plague and all that, you know, I mean, he does risk yeah, bringing it back and infecting everybody. I feel like they could have sent somebody else to go and bring Lola back when the baby. Yeah, but it's not as, you know, it's not as meaningful. It's a principle of the father of the child being with Lola. And right, but Mary and he's able to, you know, if, if she if she is to die, then they could perhaps have final words together. But if he's affected, he's he's a king now. He just like Mary mentioned, you can't just go out and do especially these if you don't have things. an heir. This is a very yeah, this is a very bash move. This is something Bash would have done. Like I don't know. I feel like oh. Bash is rubbing off on Francis a little bit because now he's being a lot more emotional than he's ever been before. And yeah, Mary's being very hard. The, there's a scene a couple episodes ago where he's like, when the choice is between being uh, like a, a good husband and a good king, what are you doing? I said, it's easy. You would be a bad king. And that's yeah. um, so. In this moment, he's not doing the rational thing. He's he's following his heart and he's. Well, he's, so, he's yeah, learning. He, I mean, he had that line, you know, that's not the kind of king I want to be um, after he kind of walks out knowing this. And so it, I think it, it just all affects him. That, King Henry's death, everything. Yeah, and, the fact that he, he's saying that he just killed his dad. It's kind of... Yeah, but, but I think, I, I think it, you know, it's it, that line of, you know, it, it weighs on you for the rest of your life. It's already starting to yeah. in the worst of ways. And so I think, you know, I think now at the very least perhaps... It's an active choice to not be that. You know, now everything I can do to not go down that road, not not do anything that I've done in the past, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I want to be the innocent kid that I used to be before all this. 
I like it. I like this Francis. I mean, I've always liked Francis, but <laughs> I always got in trouble because I wanted Francis and Mary to end up together and everybody would be hating on me. Be like, how can you not be team Bash? And I was like, I love Bash. I love him. But I just think Francis and Mary are better together. That's fair. It's fair. So, yeah. It's only because she's blonde. Oh, well, it's not true. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's uh, let's not talk about blondes. Let's talk about the darkness, you guys. <laughs> Again, nice segue. I like the segue. Bash comes in and saves the day. Lord you are like me. a knight in shining armor in this show. I just, I'm Johnny on the spot, aren't I? <laughs> just in time. Um, yeah, there's that. There's that fun part where you think that the darkness is he's bowling down the door and then suddenly it's me on the day when we shot that the door was rigged to um break in a certain spot when i kicked through it to make me look powerful <laughs> but the entire door came off its hinges and just went <laughs> and, the, and um and uh caitlin and, and lucius they had to dodge it like they just they they did dodge it and we kept going with the scene and uh -huh. they, they i was disappointed they didn't use that i was like that makes me look extra powerful just like <laughs> take the whole door down <laughs> Yeah. Then I would have really thought save it was you. the darkness. Or, or like I that would be the funny the funny version where I'd knock the whole door on them and kill them like trying oh. to save them. But which is really Bash's <laughs> style by like, causing a problem by trying to solve it. So when when you read this kind of this being the end of kind of your story arc for mm -hmm. this season, were you excited about you actually got to confront the darkness? Yeah, uh, I, we've been building up to it, and it, it, it we've kind of and it was put on the back burner for a few episodes. So it was nice mm -hmm. to finally reach a conclusion with it, and and I like what they did with it because uh, we've already seen the showdown in the woods and the fight. We've mm -hmm. seen that before with the um, with the blood priest uh, uh, Pascal's father that I killed. So I like that they made this a different sort of thing. I like that there's a gentleness about him, and I like that philosophically speaking, he's basically Nostradamus. So if you believe in Nostradamus' prophecies, which Bash does, here's a guy that's foreseen these disasters and has been doing blood sacrifice to stave them off. And indeed, there has been no plague in the time that he's been doing this. Suddenly you kill him, the next day the plague is sweeping the land and they're shooting stars. And so for Bash, there's this conundrum like, I've done it again, <laughs> I've done it again. So um, in always trying to do the right thing, and, and at the end of the day, you know, the darkness had to die. He's kind of an evil dude, but was it in service of something legitimate yeah in our world maybe well that's you know it, it, it kind of ties nicely because it's almost like being a king in some respect where okay you know what do you really do you know mm -hmm. you're the, what, what's your title again on the show the head the master the, of horse and hunt there you go. the master of horse and hunt <laughs> I thought that was a great title by King Henry to give to you. <laughs> but you've kind of been that. Like, you've been out on horses since he's yeah. given you that title, and you've been hunting the darkness. I have been doing so that. You've been yeah. doing your job. Yeah. Good on you. I wear my, <laughs> wear my title proudly. <laughs> oh, good. When, so you had a really fun fight scene and mm -hmm. some, some fun blood. Do you enjoy those fight scenes, or is that something you get into? Yeah, after a while, they're a bit stressful to start because I worry about hurting people. Like, the, the, even when your sword's made of aluminum or whatever to make you look stronger, if you're swinging at full speed at somebody's head and it connects, that hurts. It hurts a lot. Um, you can do some damage, and a lot of the time we're fighting with stunt people, but f for our own pride, we like to fight for realsies. Um, <laughs> And those are usually the takes we use is us actually fighting like quite proudly we we mostly it's us but um yeah i get a little bit stressed out about hurting people but once i get over that and it's it's, it's a dance you know it's not a fight it's a dance in the choreography and the rehearsal of it and then you just try and make it look as vicious as possible did you have you ever get been hurt uh not seriously like i've had the wind knocked out of me and i've had uh you know, you get some bruises, like in the in the fist fights. Those are actually the ones where you get hurt. Like all the fights with uh, with Francis. Um, like when he's kicking me on the ground, he's kicking. Like if you you're supposed to know the kick is incoming and sort of prepare your abs to receive it. Mm -hmm. Like you know, but then if you get that timing off, it just like whoo, it knocks the wind out of you. And then I'm trying to say my next line, and it's like, <laughs> and like he doesn't know. He thinks I'm acting, and he just keeps. Oh. Ram it, and by the end of it, because you're doing like 20 takes of it, like yeah, that after a while I had some bruises, but it's not again, it's not theater. It doesn't have to be repeatable day after day. So I don't mind taking one for the team. I don't mind getting a little beat up during a fight and just selling the authenticity of it a bit. 
Yeah. It's fun yeah. when he comes home. I'll be like, hey, honey, how was your day? He's like, oh, Toby beat me up again. Yep. <laughs> I was like, can't I just get... And actually, in the, in the fight scene, another little tidbit here. It was originally like about twice as long. This is the one, the confrontation when I'm waiting for Mary to join me at the chapel. And um, Francis shows up instead, and we get into a little fisticuffs. Originally, there was just this brutal thing where I was kneeing him in the face and just like, I just, I really kicked his ass like hard. And I think they just decided it was a bit much and cut it. So it turns out it's just like, he punches me a couple times and then I pull his hair and then he gets me in a headlock. I'm like, now I'm a hair puller. Like I didn't get any good shots in there. Well, that's the thing. Like whenever you and Francis would like fight, we'd be like, really Francis, don't fight Bash. Like you're gonna get your butt. Like seriously, you're gonna get yeah. your ass kicked. Well, first one, I didn't fight back deliberately because I didn't want to hurt him. Second one, when I actually fought him, they cut him. It all out <laughs> so i i'm the hair puller now that's my thing i'm either afraid to fight or the hair puller and, and the axe thrower the axe thrower the yeah. axe thrower tonight which yeah lots of blood tonight yeah lots of like gory stuff like yeah. gory special effects we saw the the thing actually coming out of henry's eye thanks to you finia who liked to pause on that <laughs> i had to, I had to <laughs> see her myself to make sure i didn't want it to be true we saw the the exploding pieces of men uh, after the, <laughs> the ship the ship yeah. thing that was gross <laughs> I want to, you After know, uh, speaking of if we're on Francis and you, like uh, when he was under the ice, how did you guys kind of achieve that? That was shot over two days. One day was out on an actual frozen lake, um, which I could not have chipped through with a sword if my life depended on it. It's probably like that. It was thick enough for them to drive full semi trucks out on it and feel totally confident about it. To give you an idea, they had wow. a, they had a chainsaw and like it took them a while to cut holes in the ice. Nobody went into the actual water because it was forty below. Um, we were wearing wetsuits though because at one point I did have they did dunk water over my head to make it look like I'd just come out of the water and fished them out. Then we had a second full day in studio and there was a tank with a plexiglass that I could actually break through. And then we had a. Um, we had a few things. We had Toby actually swimming in the tank for the stuff where he's like, you see his face underneath mm -hmm. and he's banging on it. And then um, we had a, a, a stunt guy doing some diving in the water later on when because they had to wrap Toby for some reason. And then we had a dummy in there as well for a couple shots. But I actually, my, my triumphant moment was we had one take to get it. They're like, okay, we have one thing of plexiglass left, breakable plexiglass. This is our last shot at this. The camera's underwater. They're like, so... The you know, stunt guy's gonna swim under there. You have to break through the glass with the sword and then reach in and just like grab his hand and then we'll cut there. And I'm like, okay. So I, I go, brr, I, break the, I break the ice. The ice wouldn't break from my sword. So then I punched the ice out and it went and that made a hole big enough for me to dive in. I dove in, grabbed the stunt guy and hauled the stunt guy right out. And he's like, whoa, I didn't know you were taking it that far. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I got it. And they said it and it, it looks great. That's awesome. Yeah, that that scene was so intense, and it, I was just like, "How cold? How cold is that?" <laughs> the tank wasn't warm, but it wasn't that cold. The day out on the ice was really cold. Yeah, because you very, guys, very you guys cold. had a really rough winter too, along with the rest of <sighs> yeah. the the North America region. <laughs> oh my God! Is there anything else with this episode that you guys want to touch on? I'm interested to see what's going to happen with Pascal now that. Yeah, because you know. he's still he's still hating. Yeah, well, he or he's certainly well aware of. And he's supposed to be the next darkness. He was getting exactly groomed why for I it. it. Yeah. I mean, what so. was uh, how much paganism did you kind of learn along the way? Like, did did, did you you know in terms of since Bash is, is uh, a pagan, but he doesn't really know the background too much. So, how, as an actor, you know, how much research did you do into um, it? Not a tremendous amount, if I'm being honest. I just kind of went on what the scripts gave me. Said uh, and and came up with fun pronunciations for some of the the pagan words and, and you know, just rolled with it. Yeah, yeah. I I, I I approached it from the point of view of uh, of being an outsider somehow without it delving specifically into paganism. And I, that's a good idea though. I should be more specific going forward. I like that. Look, look at you. You've just called me out on my laziness. <laughs> Way to go, Phil. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I still think Clarissa's alive. I was wrong oh, the whole Clarissa's time. Oh, Clarissa's absolutely alive. Oh, yeah. Is oh, Clarissa yeah. still alive? Uh, is, yeah, as far as I know. And I'm <laughs> glad, right? That, that, that body, no, uh, nobody, you know, it's See? it's gone. I should have rewound on that one. So, and I'm glad that in, we saw you and Kenna have your moment of like, we're in this together. And I like that because I wanted you to have somebody since Mary was being a flip-flopper. So, 
Yeah, I mean, regardless, it, it, I guess it's still up in the air about how they really deeply feel about each other, but they're a team, and right. they make a good team. I mean, my only thing, Bash does seem to move on pretty quickly. But think, but consider I, the I timeline can... of our show, though. Consider that months can pass between episodes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, hey, ultimately, I love uh, Bash and Kenna, so I'm all for it. He, you mainly love Kenna. Yeah, I, fair enough. <laughs> He loves him some Kenna. Like. Who doesn't? I mean, hey, the, the girls get their eye candy. I get my eye candy. Everyone's happy. Why not? Thank you, CW. <laughs> yes. That is why we love you. Do you want to, uh, do you guys, we good with this episode? Do you have anything else about this episode? My dad just texted me. Got teary-eyed when the brothers hugged. She locked Francis out. Betcha that's how he gets sick. Huh. <laughs> there we go. It was good to see, like when you when Bash went to bow to him, and he was like, "No, dude, let's bring it in and have this hug." That was really oh, nice to see. There's a lot going on in that moment. It's like, okay, Dad's dead, brother's the king. I was here because my dad allowed me to be. What does Francis think of me? Where do we stand? What happens now? Like everything's going on in that moment. I didn't get to say goodbye. So many thoughts there, and all it. All you get out of it is just a hug, and that's sometimes just what you need. That was, that was, a, that was a good hug, though. It was, a, it was a sturdy hug. It was a very sturdy was good. hug. <laughs> How I, many I, times did you guys do that hug? Uh, never enough. Never enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in seriousness, probably a good, like, seven or eight times. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you and Toby enjoy doing your scenes together? Yeah, we have a good time. You do? Yeah. Yeah, Toby's a, Toby's a riot. He's He's one of the funniest people I know. Really? Yeah, because, I mean, Francis is a fairly humorless character, but Toby is really, really funny. That's awesome to know. Is Who do you think is, like, your favorite person to share a scene with? Like, who do you always have? I'm, I'm not playing with? that game. You're not playing that? No. No, <laughs> I, 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 on, that on, no I, honestly, every, everybody's great. I will yeah. say that we don't have any uh, massive egos or people that I dread doing scenes with. Like, they're, awesome. they're all fun and awesome. Is there anybody that you haven't done a scene with yet that you hope that you get to do one in the future? I want more scenes with Catherine. I'm, I'm shipping Basher in something fierce. It needs to happen. <laughs> well, we have some fan questions that they tweeted at yeah. us. So, let's see. One is just Candy Pie 22 Tell Bash I said hi. So, hey, hi. Hey, she's hey, fangirling hey. right now. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and WWE Fangirl Forever. 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 <laughs> wants to know, if he were king for just one day, what would he do as king? Hmm. Well... I think the first thing you got to do is take your pants off. <laughs> I, just, I don't. I just don't see what else. I mean, yeah. Okay, really. that's an answer. That, that's a start, and then just go from there. <laughs> see where the day takes you. <laughs> uh, Joanne at ninety two seventy three said, "Would Diane approve of Bash and Kenna's marriage?" She wasn't invited or notified about the wedding, was she? <laughs> no, no, she was not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. We haven't heard from her. I don't know if she knows about it yet. Um, I, presumably, I would have told her. Um, uh, what, yeah, what would she think? What do you? Let's open that to the panel. Uh, I mean, she. I mean, she was supposed to kill Kenna, technically. Oh. Before she right. left. So, I don't know, I, but Diane doesn't seem like an evil person to me, so I'm sure she's happy that Kenna is still alive and kicking and has some safety, because obviously she raised a good boy, and he's going to make sure she's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like Catherine, she's strategic, and mm -hmm. Kenna doesn't pose any sort of a threat, and if I'm happy, I imagine that she's probably happy. She might tell me to beware and careful of, you know, what designs people might have on me. But mm -hmm. now that Henry's dead, you have nothing to worry about. Because that was the only, like, complication, so well, to speak. Well, Francis could have been a complication if he could didn't decide to hug me, you know? <laughs> yeah, there you go. This is true. Uh, and actually now, uh, too, without Henry there, uh, like, Catherine is not the biggest fan of Bash. He would pose a threat to um, the succession. And there's, uh, you know, there's Francis has two little brothers as well. Mm -hmm. So if there, if I have any support still among the common people, I'm in trouble. Yeah. Also, people would like to know what do you and your castmates do downtime together? Um, what do we, we play? We play a little Cards Against Humanity. That's a thing we like to do. I just got that game in the mail yesterday. Yeah. Adelaide's uh, she's really good at that game. Yeah, she some people some people are noticeably better than others. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I'm, I end up being kind of bad at it, even though I, I love it. Um, Adelaide shocked me. 
Yeah. What did she shock you with? I'm not going to get specific, but some of the ones, like, we would, like, you know, when you read the cards aloud, and we were like, okay, this one wins. Who was it? And we weren't expecting Adelaide to <laughs> put that card down. It's, it's always the ones you don't suspect. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, everybody would like to know, what can you tell us, if anything, about season two? What can we expect? Are we going to see Queen Elizabeth? That's from Vanessa Daniels. Thanks, Vanessa. It's a, it's a very good question, but um, I, I, I'm not being coy when I say that I don't know yet. Um, although we did end on a bit of a cliffhanger in season one, so we'll certainly find out more about uh, Lola's baby and um, and the plague and uh, and uh, Pascal, I hope, and mm -hmm. um, and uh, and Francis as king. We'll probably see. A, maybe we'll see a coronation. Maybe we'll pick up after it happens. I don't know. I'm, I'm not writing it. They don't tell me. Any, like I say, I get the script the day before, even when we're shooting this. That's so. crazy that you yeah. guys have to memorize the stuff you do. Yeah, it's it's a lot of words sometimes. Yeah, a bunch of them get cut even before you see the the episode too. So there's there's entire scenes and monologues that never make it. Wow. So yeah. the, out of this entire season, what has been your favorite scene to shoot? It's tough. It's a tough one. I, I, I've, I've actually, I've really enjoyed the, the, the sort of domestic simplicity of the stuff with Kenna, mm -hmm. but I also loved doing the scene out on the ice there, like just like taking two days to do a scene and having and running in this like thigh deep snow and dunking my head in frozen water. Like there's there's a rush that comes with that, you know. So it's hard to pick a favorite, but those I guess are all up there. That's awesome. Well, do you guys want to do the bash off now before we wrap it up? Sure. We we tease this to fans. Yeah. <laughs> so to have, it's about that time. It's about the time for the bash off. Uh, so, so these are bashing questions. off sounds a little dirty. I'll just put that up. <laughs> it's very appropriate for you. It's true. We did. We did. It you guys, you guys did your research. <laughs> bashing off. Yeah. Now okay. just know I'm not cheating because I have not seen these questions either. Fellas, not seen these questions. Okay. So basically, we're going to ask you guys questions, and we're going to. We're we going go. to vote on who we think we, 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 is. Is a better answer? Yeah, I don't a better know. Better answer? Sure. <laughs> I love how you're preparing to play. Oh, this isn't a physical challenge. This is no. <laughs> well, I mean, All right. no, no, no. So it's, it's a test of wits. <laughs> basically, we'll hear we we'll hear we Taurus's answer, and then we'll hear and we'll we'll vote on it, and then we'll hear Phil's answer, and we'll vote on it, and the, uh, whoever wins. The girls have paddles now. It only goes from six to ten. It does. So, so <laughs> the least the lowest we can get is a six. Okay. So first question. Torrance, we'll, we'll let you go first because you're the guest. Uh, if you were a flavor of ice cream, which one would you be and why? As bash. As bash. Hmm. Mm. Come mm. on, you're Gemini just like me. You got to give a good answer. All right, all right. Um, uh, Rocky Road. I was going to say, no, I That's swear to God, because, if I wrote uh, that wrong. Why, why? It's because I'm... Uh, I'm uh, I'm 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 a little bit uh, uh, a little bit of everything. I'm I'm very sweet, but uh, it, I'm I'm not easy. Okay, okay. I, I... Uh, can I give? Should the we same vote? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, an eight! I'm allergic to nuts. <laughs> Rocky Road's just That's marshmallows, isn't it? No, nuts in it. No, nuts in it. I fell. No. Phil, you could. Well, I'm a little bit nuts, so <laughs> there we go. I, I gotta come up with a different answer, though. Now. Uh, That's the advantage to to going first. As I get. I thought the here. advantage was going second because he could think about it. Yeah. Um, so did I. Uh, I'm gonna pick chocolate. Chocolate. I mean, Why? like just Why regular that? chocolate. No, because it, for for me, I either like Rocky Road or I like chocolate. Does Oreo count? We'll pick Oreo. Final Oreo? answer: Oreo. Six. I'll, I'll give you a ten. Six. Because <laughs> oh I like chocolate. This? Torrance, can we ask you to answer? This is why I don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, it's your opinion, and you know, but six. <laughs> All right, so question one. Question you know one. how to speak French, right? I used to. Oh, uh, darn it. Yeah, you got me beat there. I, I can't speak French. <laughs> he only remembers well, the dirty words. Th this, this, actually, <laughs> this is really appropriate. Do you have any hidden talents? Um, Do I have any hidden talents? <laughs> <laughs> Is this, a, is this a PG rated yeah, show? What, what, oh goodness, there we go. We're PG-13. Thank you for that. Oh gosh. You're making me look good. Um, online. Yeah. That's true. Ladies. I don't know. Now, is this a bash question or a Torrance question? Bash. Oh. Oh. Ah. Bash. Does he have... It's a bash off. Bash -off. That's right. A yeah, bash right. question. Okay, go ahead. Answer us, Torrance. Mm, I, uh, uh... Ooh. Ooh, boy. Oh boy, hidden talent, hidden talent. 
<laughs> I feel I feel like I feel like Bash could probably tie a uh, uh, a knot with a cherry, cherry stem. stem. Absolutely, <laughs> that's a good answer. Yeah. That's a good answer. I feel like he's had some practice <laughs> at that. That's a good answer. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have maraschino cherries in that state? <laughs> uh, any stem. Oh, any stem. Just, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> what what can we you go. do? Uh, <laughs> you are, I, don't, I don't even know what if this can, is. What can I do? <laughs> I can tie a pine cone in a knot with my tongue. <laughs> I make great goulash. Right, what is goulash? That's what they, that's what they fed, uh, y- y- you know, um, like soldiers. Just out of pure curiosity. <laughs> hey, can, what right. is goulash? All right, you're Good, gonna, it's like beef a stew. Ma- a it's man like who can make stew. something edible out of what was on offer. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty good. good. All right, let's talent. do one uh, final question one before final I get question, embarrassed. And you, have, and you have to answer this in your bash accent. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> He's a little rusty. All right. It's been a while. We'll, we'll I apologize if it's... Uh, okay. Oh, my God. Uh, what is your best pickup pick line, Bash? As Bash? As Bash. Uh, you know, I could be king one day. Oh, that was good. Yeah, that, that, that's a very good that was one. good. <laughs> I'm the master of horse and hunt. You know it rhymes with hunt. <laughs> That's, I'll give that a 12. <laughs> You're just too hot. That was a good one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh gosh. Thank oh. That is awesome. That was really good. I just, I just, oh my god. I really just want to ask him the rest of these questions, but I know we have to wrap it up. So I know. Why, why? 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 We're online. Where's this time limit? Well, we, well hey, we'll can I ask more questions? Can, can we? Can we go a little bit longer? A little bit longer. Just ro- one more. Ro- roll them off. Roll, roll them off. off. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, what they would have been. Yeah. So, what is the most noble thing you've ever done? Mm, I have no idea. <laughs> what is your favorite hashtag? Uh, team bash. Uh, team no pants. <laughs> That's a good one. What is your ideal first date? Um, I don't even know. Sushi. You lose all the music on your computer slash iPod. As, not as bash anymore. These isn't yeah, so no, ba- these, these are torrents. Sorry. These are torrents. Yeah, yeah. These are torrents. yeah. Uh, you lose all the music on your computer or iPod. What is the first song you read download and why? Um, maybe uh, Rebellion by Arcade Fire, just because it's an amazing song and never gets old. If you ruled the world, what would you change? Mm, uh, I'd try and make things just a little bit more fair. Good answer. You know, just, I, I mean, that's very general. I guess I'm thinking in terms of income inequality and, you know, people's access to basic human needs. Aww. What is your dream role? I, that's a tough, I get asked that. I don't really have one. I just, it's whatever. Um, it, when it comes across my desk, I know whether it's cool or not. Like I don't have ambitions to one day play Hamlet or something. Like it, like it'd be cool, but I don't care that much. That's exactly like, what Jonathan said. <laughs> yes, I mean that's. I mean that that is the actor the actor role that everybody wants to do. But I yeah. um, I I don't know what it is. I would have loved to be in Game of Thrones, but I don't think I'm allowed to anymore. Really? Yeah. Why not? It's too similar to our show. They put these things in, in contracts. Uh, Marjorie Tyrell has been in like... She, well, she was in... Uh, yeah, uh, Natalie Dormer yeah, was Natalie in the Tudors. Uh, there, there's a moratorium on that, obviously, once this show's done. Yeah, okay. But if, if rain goes as we expect it will for a while... Yeah, we don't want it. It's not going to happen. So I, I don't want to see you on <laughs> Yeah, that, exactly. Something's gone a little bit awry if I end up on Game of Thrones. Is that your favorite TV show that's on right now besides rain, obviously? Yeah, it, it, it pro- I think it probably is, yeah. And your cat's yeah. named Daenerys, right? Yeah, we got we got cats. They're named Renly and Daenerys. <laughs> Renly, really? Yeah, I, I say we named them after Book Renly, not Show Renly. Okay. I think Book Renly was a bit more gallant, okay. or he came across that way, anyhow. Yeah, no, no, I would agree. I would agree. Well, great. Do you any? What other upcoming projects? Yeah, do upcoming you have? projects. Uh, I, the the one in the pipeline is a is a film called. It, called Edward. Um, it's about uh, Edward Mybridge, who is uh, um, a, a crazy photographer who was known for doing motion studies of, of naked people. And uh, he he was a crazy dude, and he and he like killed his wife's lover, and then was acquitted on the grounds of justifiable homicide. And wow. yeah, he was he was eccentric. He got in a stagecoach accident, which so he was prone to outbursts, and just a really fascinating dude. Um, 
and that's going to come out uh, hopefully hit the festival circuit pretty soon so we'll see what happens with it and what are your plans for the summer what are you guys going to be doing where can people find you where can they stalk you at nobody will ever find us <laughs> <laughs> leave them alone <laughs> we're going to travel a bit we're going to go around Europe and uh, and just take a little bit of time and then we're right back at uh, shooting in late June early July so not that much time to rest good deal well thank you so much for being here thank both you. of you guys It's it's been so much fun well, and thank you Please come back if you have a chance next season. We would love to have you both back. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Anytime you're in LA, let us know and we'll uh, rock it out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Bash that it come back. <laughs> uh, where can we find you guys? You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Fania Thomas. And follow us here on AfterBuzz TV, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if they don't, if they're not following you already, what? Where can we follow you on? At Torrance Coombs on Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, at Alyssa Campanella on Twitter and Instagram. I had to cut the A off Alyssa. Too long of a name. <laughs> and you guys can find me at KeatonM33 on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. It's been such a fun season, and what a great way to end it. I we, know. we didn't end it with a bang. We ended it with a bash. Woo! <laughs> now you've been saving that one. <laughs> Practice that one. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.